Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, the wind design example in lesson, what lesson are we on? Five, I believe. Yes, lesson five, wind design example. And it starts on page, sorry, three, two, one. It starts officially on page 133 and it goes on for a few pages. And the first thing it is asking for, actually, I'm just going to give you a reference example. It says, the following is a step-by-step -step design of a small commercial building built to resist wind forces. The building is identical to that used on the earthquake design example that starts on page 112 and is assumed to be located in an urban area with a basic wind speed of 70 miles per hour. So that's an urban area. We'll write that down. Urban basic wind speed is 70 mph. All right, there's a starting point. And then if you want to go to page 112, and we shall do so shortly, you can figure out what the building looks like. All right, and if you go a little bit lower, it says wind pressure. What is the wind pressure on the vertical pro projected area using method two? So the first thing is first, let's go down here. Let's put it in a different color. And it says, well, let's go ahead and write it out. What is the wind pressure on the vertical projected area using method two. All right, there's the question. That took a little while. And what we want to do first is, I'll change my color, but we want to write down the wind equation. What is the wind equation? Or not the wind equation. What is the pressure equation? And the typical pressure equation, we can take a look, using the UBC, of course, is P equals CE, CQ, QS, I. And as you can remember, these all mean something important factor. This is basic wind speed pressure, Q, CQ is, I always forget what these are. I know this is exposure and then this is, I believe, where it's located, but we'll figure that out when we go look it up. I always forget what, what exactly they are, but uh, first things first, let's go ahead and start right here. CE, what is it? And to get CE, you go to table 16-H on page 127. This is also in your IBC code, or UBC, sorry, if you have it. And you look at 16H, and you look, oh, we're in method two, projected area method. And it says, what is the, the wind pressure on the vertical projected area? So you remember, when you're looking at, here's the, the basic building right there. This is your parapet sticking up, like that. And remember, method two, does not account for anything. It just looks at the vertical area and it hits it with something like that. In this case, what we're going to have, let me change colors, is we're going to have something that looks like this. It goes up to 15 feet and then anything over 15 feet, it starts to get bigger. That's about 15. So this will be consistent. And then from here to, let's say right there, the top, it'll get a little bit bigger. If that makes any sense. And it will, you'll see. All right, so we're back to CE. I'm going to switch back colors. Is your exposure factor or exposure coefficient? You go to table 16. Well, let's see Q is 16H. So uh, let's go ahead and see you CQ first. Actually, it really doesn't matter what we do first. We'll do CE. You go to 16G, and that is on page 126. So. Flip it on over and go to page 126. It says combined height, exposure, and gust factor, CE. And as you can see, for 0 to 15 feet, it is 0 0.62. And that's because we are exposure B. And then for up to 20 feet, it is 0 0.67. 0.67. Oh, that's not it. 
20 foot, it's zero point. So up to this point, CE is going to be 0 0.62, and then from here to here, this is actually going to be, what is this, this is 14 feet, this is 3 feet, so it's a total of 17 foot tall. So let's figure out where, at 17 foot, what do we need? So at 17 foot, and we'll interpolate, at 17 foot, if you, I don't want to do this in my head too much, but I will this time. I think you understand what interpolation is. If not, then uh, look it up and you'll be able to find it or just figure it out. If you can see, it's pretty simple here. There's 0 0.5 difference between this and this, and there's 5 foot difference. So I'm just going to add 2. For every 1 foot, there's a change of 0 0.01. That makes sense. So it should be 0 0.64 at 17. So I pray that's not too um, difficult. So these two are going to be different. This is going to be using the 0 0.64, and this will be using the 0 0.62, up to there. All right, CQ, and that's the only thing that's going to change is your your height coefficient. Let's call it pressure, or yeah, no height coefficient, combined height coefficient. We'll just kind of call it combined height coefficient, and then. When we go to pressure coefficient, which is CQ, we are on method two, and you can look on method two, and it says on vertical projected area. Yes, that's what we want. Structures over 40 feet or less than 100. Structures over. Structures 40 feet or less. Okay, and we want the 1.3. Since it's less than 40 feet in height, it's going to be a 1.3 factor. If we're over 40 foot in height, it would be a 1.4, and then if it's on the horizontal projected area, it's 0.7 up. So that's if we were doing the uh, the roof. Then going for QS, which is our next. QS is going to equal, actually, I believe QS equals 0 0.00256 V squared. Don't quote me on that. And you'll see that that's a basic pr wind pressure per, and that's for miles per hour. Um, and that's usually, usually, I think 70. You can get it at 70. And that's what this table is over. And it's table 16-F, and it's reproduced on page 128. And it's uh, wind stagnation pressure. So that is, yes, and if you could look down on that same page 128, you can see QS equals 0 0.00256 V squared. And you'll see that in a lot of different um, different loading manuals, that 0 0.00256 V squared. And that's for miles per hour, when you're being miles per hour. So we are go up to that table and you see that we have a basic wind speed of 70. So you have a QS of 12.6. And that should be PSF, pounds per square foot, not the pressure. All right, now moving right along. What do we need next? I, importance factor. And this building is not like a, anything important or has a lot of people inside or is an uh, emergency response type building, so it gets a 1.0. All right, we now have everything, so let's go change colors again, and let's actually figure what out what, what this is, this pressure. And what I'm gonna do first is get rid of these. I hope that didn't confuse you what I was trying to say, but you're gonna have a pressure up to this point, then you're gonna have a pressure at that point. So let's, at first, let's call this, maybe this will make it easier. Let's call this P1, and this will be, now let's make this P2, and this will be P1. All right, so P1 equals, of course, C, E, C, Q, Q, S, I, and we are going to use a C, E of, at P1, it's 0 0.62, a Q, S, which is 1.3, it's going to be the same, the rest is going to be the same, 12.6, PSF, and then 1.0. Let's go ahead and write the equation for P2. And this time we have a 0 0.64. And that's going to be our only difference. We still have the same um, CQ, QS, and I. I'm going to get my calculator and we're going to figure out what this is. All right, 0.62. 
times 1.3 times 12.6 times 1. This is going to be in PSF again. And that's 10.15, and I'll call 10.2 PSF. And that's going to equal right here. So at that point, it is 10.2 PSF. And then up here, it's going to be 0.64 times 1.3 times 12.6 times 1 is 10.5. That's 10.4 equal to round up 10.5 PSF. And does that make sense? Yes, because it's getting a little bit larger right there. That makes sense. All right, so those are our answers for this first uh, question. It says, what is the wind pressure on the vertical projected area? This is the wind pressure. At that point, it's 10.5 PSF. At this point, it's 10.2. And then all around here, it's 10.2. And right there, it's it's increasing at a linear rate. So once again, these are our, are our answers. And a diagram never hurts. So there we go. There are answers. All right, I will go ahead and ask or go over the next questions that they ask on the next video. I'll see you then.